So, uh, Rick, I just wanted to follow up on something you said. 46% of the people in New Hampshire get their water from their own wells, and that's a very unregulated set of uh, water supply to the state, so that's, that's a really good recommendation they made to you. Um, one of the things that uh, m another one of my bill, which is not an issue here in Hampton, uh, is that one of my bills passed um, the house that is going to create a much stricter standard for arsenic, too. And I mention that because we have a very high rate of bladder cancer in the state of New Hampshire, 37 percent higher than any other state in the, in the nation. So that bill is going to result in having the arsenic. Um, and so I tell you that because it, in private wells across the state, that's a very big problem in various areas. So. Um, and as you may have know, may know, most of the work I've done in the State House um, has to do with reducing the rate of cancer because not only do we have the highest rate of bladder cancer, but we also have the highest rate of breast, um, esophageal, and um, what was the other one? <laughs> I just forgot what I was saying. Uh, cancer in the state of New Hampshire. So um, most of my work is, is centered around that. We also have the pediatric cancer cluster here on the seacoast. Yeah. That's where this work has started for me. So. Um, a lot of the work I've done has to do with looking at the PFAS standard. Um, we just had a two and a half an hour, hour meeting in Merrimack on this um, issue with the state of New Hampshire DES, uh, went going through all of their calculations that resulted in the numbers that were presented by Aquarian. And we have a lot of problems with those numbers. It basically didn't come off of EPA's number much. Uh, there is one part of the calculation that if uh, they said they used professional judgment to select the number, and if they had done it like New Jersey did, it would result in a threefold lower standard for PFO in it, just one of those chemicals. And my concern is uh, that there's only two of the chemicals currently being regulated. We're proposing that four be regulated um, out of like the 5,000 PFAS chemicals there are. Um, and only a small segment of those we're testing for, I think about 26 now. So um, the problem with these chemicals is they accumulate in your body. Mm -hmm. And they stay there for a really long time in your body. Even if you stop taking in any of those chemicals into your body, they'll be there for a really long time. So that's my concern, especially when we talk about young children, uh, prenatal exposure and early childhood life exposure. So uh, you know there are some of the chemicals showing up in your water that are not being regulated. Uh, and those numbers result in about, I think you said 48 or 50 parts per trillion total PFAS when uh, the maximum is put in there. So I have, I have issues with that because I would like to be protective of these young children looking at the most protective standards when we only regulate a small set of them uh, so that we're we take precautions rather than saying, well, we're below 70 so we're okay. So that's kind of where all my work is going toward. Um, that public comment process will get underway starting in March and then I believe the, uh, the rules will be final unless there's some delays by the fall, we'll probably go to jail car in the state. So there's a bit of a process going on. Mm -hmm. We um, are planning to, uh, a group of us, and with Conservation Law Foundation, we've been involved in really inputting into that process, and we'll continue to do that. Did you have a question? Lindy, do you ha are you privy to the information that uh, John Hurley he just showed? Did you get the reports from Aquarian? I think I do. See the PFAS yeah. testing? Yeah. Yeah, I hope that helps a little it, bit. It does, but I still I still have concerns about when those numbers are higher. Yeah. And exactly, you know, you don't sample real time all the time, so there's probably fluctuations in between. Okay. So I do have questions. I do have concerns about having those kinds of levels, um, especially when you get close to other states' levels. Um, mm -hmm. So one of the most, like John said. Um, you know, New York and New Jersey are some of the more, most protective states right now. Mm -hmm. Other states have even gotten a bit, proposing to go a bit lower. So mm -hmm. um, when you get down to the levels that other states say is not safe, I would prefer to be below those numbers right now. But, um, you know, EPA is not taking any action with pretty much anything right now. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they go through these things one by one by one, these chemicals, to see what the health standards are. And it takes a really long time to get health information done, you know, these studies take three years minimum mm. to do once they, you know, are done and, uh, and reported. So, you know, we're looking at a very long time period to find out how these 5,000 chemicals should be regulated. So. Mindy, are you also paying attention at the state level to the radii of the wells and whether there's a, an even ground or sloping ground near wells? 
for potential contamination from fertilizers, oil in the driveway, salt and Yeah, the uh, so I actually was just looking at some of the other states that have some very comprehensive packages mm -hmm. that they're proposing um, to protect source water like you're talking mm -hmm. about. So I have been starting discussions with people about doing that very same thing here in New Hampshire. So I do share your concerns about that. I appreciate it. Um, so a group of us led by Conservation Law Foundation submitted a petition which unfortunately just Friday was rejected <coughs> by the state, which got to this issue about the one by one assessment <coughs> of these chemicals, which was going to take a treatment based standard, which was similar to what John was talking about, saying we already know we have a technology we can get all these chemicals out with. Um, the, um, the ion exchange and then the, the granular activated carbon. I'm on the re Restoration Advisory Board at Pease, and that system uh, we're watching is, is very effective at getting all these chemicals out. So that petition was submitted uh, to come up with a standard that if you have these chemicals above a certain threshold, that you would then treat them and they'd all be gone. Um, unfortunately, they rejected that, saying they're waiting on EPA to come up with a step by step analysis of each of the chemicals. So mm -hmm. that is not. Not very help. Um, we're not happy about Wait. that. Could I ask a question on that? Who's saying that? Uh, State of New Hampshire rejected the Department Scott. of Environmental Services. Yep, they rejected it with a one-page letter last Friday, saying we're right. just going to wait on. Because EPA. I've gone to conferences all over New England, and they said the more you take together. Now these are private companies. These are other state agencies. Yeah. The more you look at together, out of the four or five thousand chemicals that yep. we know exist right now, yep. the better off you are. At right containing them and figuring out, in essence, how to get rid of them. But we, like, we have good technology now that we know is very effective at removing them. But I would say that what DES said is, I'm not sure where they came up. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm a layperson, but I've talked to several people, and I believe I've kept you fairly informed of what I found out, and that that's an awful statement to hear. And I also like to, uh, well, I'll let you continue, and then I'll... Yeah. say what I want to say after. It's conquered after all, Regina. <laughs> so like I said, if, if we are successful in pointing out that this one professional judgment was not um, appropriate, which I think we will be or could be, that would result in a threefold lower standard than what we're current uh, for PFOA in, a, in, in a, of itself um, than we current see, currently see from them. Um, the other thing, uh, so there are a couple of bills. One is a drinking water commission bill, which was the drinking water commission that had been uh, looking at protecting the drinking water of the seacoast, that timed out, and so there's a bill in uh, that Rennie Cushing brought back in to reestablish that commission, which is a really important commission, and I would hope that this, um, this um, Hampton would support that again. Um, many of the legislators are on that commission. Uh, Mike Edgar was a big part of that commission, too, and Regina was on that commission, and uh, it's a very important forward-looking if they do a good job of forward-looking um, protection of our water in the state of New Hampshire on, on the seacoast. Um, and the other issue that you know I'm involved with is Coakley Landfill. The, now the meetings are public uh, due to the lawsuit that we were successful in bringing to Superior Court. The next meeting is this Wednesday at 2.30 at the City Hall uh, at the library. Um, I try to encourage as many people to show up there to see what's going on, to see what the money's being spent on. $17 million has been spent on the Coakley Landfill and we don't have an active remedial system. We just have a cap on top of it. Um, and recently, because of a reduction in a 1,4-dioxane standard, which is a different chemical, two private wells in Greenland, the golf course, the Breakfast Hill Golf Course, and another private home uh, were shut down. Their water supplies and remedial systems were put in. The state definitively said it was Coakley Landfill that caused those wow. exceedances. Yeah. So there are toxins migrating off that site. And it's only a matter of time, in my opinion, when we come up with new standards for PFAS and other things that would trigger something to happen that um, the remedial system should get installed. And there's the bills back in again that I had in last session, uh, Rennie Cushing brought, in, brought back in uh, uh, to s implement to some kind of remedial system for the Coakley landfill. Um, I think that is about it for that. I am concerned, I did hear, and I have talked to John about this, um, and there was part of the discussion about um, what has been happening with MW6. I realize um, I agree that it's not entirely from Coakley. It could be from the car wash. But there are several wells up next to on uh, well 14 and well 16 in particular that I'm concerned they're hydraulically upgradient from that car wash. So there must be another source of those low levels of PFAS compounds. And I think that that and plus the historic um, detection in the uh, Lafayette Terrace area of PFAS and then there's some wood knoll 
There's a couple of, um, so it, certainly PFAS is migrating this way from Coakley. Whether or not it's the, it's the cause of MW6 or a contributor is, is one of my questions. So, mm. so Hampton should be monitoring the Coakley landfill situation. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so a couple things. Um, Coakley landfill. We, I know the issue in the beginning was they were, you know, they're claiming that, oh, it's definitely not affecting the Hampton Aquarian Wells. And we really wanted to get them to set up monitoring wells to the south and east, I believe. Mm -hmm. Has there any been any? Um, actually, uh, so the last Cancer Cluster Commission meeting that we had, um, they did, there was a letter that um, the commission received that day that said that yes, now they agree that radial flow occurs. So flow from Coakley Landfill goes off in all directions. And mm -hmm. they had been implementing on the site itself uh, an investigation to the south um, of several wells. They were looking at what wells exist. They were going to do some testing of those wells on the south side between Coakley Landfill and Hampton. And I know that work is ongoing. Mm. Okay. And now I have a, I want to bring up a couple things about some past bills that came from you. Um, one that got through was Senate Bill 309. Right. That's, that the, that's the one that's responsible for this rulemaking that's going on right now. And that's in process mm -hmm. of happening. Yep. And then there was another bill, 1100 something. It was a it was a House bill. I don't know the number. 1101. That yeah. that's what actually made through and passed, right? Both of them did. And okay. but 1101 was a combination of other bills that you had right. previously submitted and were denied. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So I just want the public to be oh, aware yeah. of that. Yeah. And also, I hope going forward. Now I just received earlier today. I mentioned it before that. Uh, representative Cushing is not going able to be a Hampton representative to the Cancer yeah. Cluster Commission because he's appointed as a House member now to that commission. Mm -hmm. So that means Hampton's going to be looking to appoint a rep. Um, I'm not sure Mike Edgar's here. He was on it before. If he was, he still would probably take a rep seat as well. Not available. Well, I think, I mean, I would like to see Mindy Mesmer involved, whether, I don't know what, but I would also like to run it by, I know that Patricia Bourgeois was not aware of the vacancy, so I would like to run it by our Hampton reps, but I'm not sure what seats are available on the commission, but perhaps the board could consider, after we discuss it with our local reps, if we could perhaps suggest uh, Mesmer for at least an at-large appointment. I think she brings a lot to the table. I think she's willing to do it. And it would make me very nervous if she wasn't involved in the process just because she is, you know, the circumstance that she's no longer a state rep right now. Yeah. I like to make sure that that does not exclude her from ongoing investigations. And I talked to the senator about it a couple weeks ago, Senator Sherman, and he said that he thinks it's very important that you're involved as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I really like to see that happen. Yep. I just want to let the board know. Jim? No. Rick? No, thank you. I enjoyed thank you. your report. Thank you. All right. Oh, one quick question. One more. As far as aquarium, do you think that they are justly doing what is in their ability to do as I far as so. monitoring uh, this PFAS? You know, I, like I said, though, I'm concerned about the other unregulated PFAS chemicals that are in there. And I, I'm, I'm glad that they're blending them down to a level. You know, I, I'm concerned about blending in general, but, um, you know, I think. The thing, about, the thing about these chemicals, I think John and I were talking about this the other, the other day, how can we make people feel better about the water? Well, the thing is that, you know, a year and a half ago, the state told us 600 parts per trillion was okay. And then on May 31st, it was 70 parts per trillion. And other states are saying in the tens. So, you know, when people see those kinds of movements in the standards on a, over a pretty short period of time, yeah. it makes people wonder what really is safe. So when you look at, you know, which ones are we regulating? We're only regulating two right now. And there's 5,000 of them, and there's like 10 or t whatever in your water. So that's where um, I think some of the questions come. And I would prefer to be very proactive and be very, you know, mm -hmm. act with a lot of precaution. Can I just say something? Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you again, Mindy, for all your efforts thank and you. the, the brave effort to get the Coakley Landfill Group subject to the right to know law. You and Representative Edgar and and uh, four others, the brave six. <laughs> and uh, we thank you. And we, of course, joined you in that successful effort, uh, groundbreaking thank you. throughout the country. Yes. And uh, 
your continued involvement in this field will be critical. I know mm -hmm. you've been at all the PFAS meetings that I've attended, the uh, ones, uh, the major uh, program that was put on in, in Exeter by the EPA, uh, revealing the shocking effects that these chemicals can have on people uh, that remain in their bloodstream for a long period of time. So critical that your involvement remain, and, and we hope you can. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.